one. Hello, welcome to another DevNation Java Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Actually, we have other DevNation schedules, but this is the first DevNation Java Tech Talk. And today, since everybody is like in quarantine or staying at home, we have a very special guest. Today, we're going to talk with uh, Geoffrey Desmet, and he's going to present us how AI technique and Java and can fight this terrible disease that is COVID-19. So we have a lot of trouble like trying to solve uh, the schedule problems with nurses and doctors. So, well, maybe Geoffrey can give uh, more about the solution instead of the problem because we're well aware well, well, well of what is happening. So Geoffrey, the stage is yours. Thank you. Um, so let me share my screen. Uh, so um, I'm going to talk today about uh, how you pl apply uh, AI planning versus COVID-19 in uh, hospital settings. So how we can schedule the nurses and the doctors um, to shifts and take into account um, special constraints that have arised through the, uh, as a result of this pandem pandemic. So um, let me just give you an example here. So this is a medical staff rostering uh, case. And we have a number of uh, nurses here and the doctor. So we have one doctor, we have two nur normal nurses, and a third nurse over here, which is also a respiratory specialist, which is a skill that some of the nurses um, have acquired, but not all of them. Now we can see here we have a morning shift, which starts at 6 a.m. and goes to 2 p.m. That's being assigned to this particular nurse. And there's no problem there. So now let's take a look what happens if we add a few more uh, of these shifts. So here's another morning shift. Here's a number uh, three day shifts, which start at 2 p.m. until 10 p.m. in the morning. And you can see that um, this particular shift needs um, a nurse. Now, like I've said before, have any respiratory specialist is also just a normal nurse. So that's fine to assign this shift to her. Here you can see we need a respiratory specialist. You can see for this afternoon shift we have that. We are assigning it to her. But here we have a problem because here we have a morning shift that is assigned to a normal nurse while we need a respiratory specialist. So that's where a constraint is broken. So when we do this, in no, this and this is of course before COVID-19, right? And you'll see in a minute what happens when we start adding COVID-19 constraints. But um, this we still need to do today. We need to make sure that if we need a, uh, on a particular morning, we need a respiratory specialist uh, for a particular ward, that we have somebody who has that skill. Um, here you can see that we need a doctor, and of course we've done that. Now let's take a look at what else we had before we had the COVID constraints, and which we still have today, of course. But every nurse needs to have, and every doctor needs to have enough sleep. So when we have an evening shift that goes up to 10, p.m. and then we have a morning shift that starts at 6 a.m. There's only eight hours in between and that's not enough time for that nurse to go home, get some sleep and get, get some breakfast and get some dinner maybe in the evening also and get back uh, on uh, into the hospital, right? And of course we want to make sure that these uh, staff is well arrested so we don't want to do this. Um, so that again is a hard constraint. So hard constraint, I've colored those in red, which means is if you do that, you, this is not really a feasible schedule not something you should be putting in production. Um, here's a few other examples. Um, this is about a day off uh, requests. So here the respiratory specialist nurse has asked uh, a day off request on and actually an unavailable day. She took PTO vacation, something like that on the day. And we're actually still assigning her a shift on that day. So that's actually a hard constraint broken. So that's why it's in red. However, we could also say that some uh, staff is saying I don't want to work on Tuesday, um, but um, it's not a hard constraint, it's a soft constraint, it's a desire, it's a wish, right? And that's, we color them yellow, right? And we can see we are assigning this doctor to a shift anyway, despite him not wanting to work, it's an undesired day, and that's where we lose a soft constraint. So that basically means that um, the planning solution will assign shifts to that doctor on the if there is no other option, right? While on, while if you break hard constraints, it's going to do its utmost best to avoid that at all costs. Uh, the, so uh, regardless of how many soft constraints it needs to, to do that. You can also see you can do things like a desired day, which means that on this particular day, we want the doctor to be um, doing, to be assigned to that day, right? That's not happening here. So again, we have a violation. 
Now, let's take a look what happens um, since March this year. Uh, we have COVID constraints coming into the, the equation. So here are COVID constraints. So we have a number of shifts which are in COVID wards. So that's in a ward where we're dealing with COVID patients. So for example, here this afternoon shift has, uh, you can see the biohazard sign here because that's in a COVID, COVID ward. Um, and we can also see that each of the uh, nurses and doctors have a certain COVID risk. So, um, and basically, this nurse, uh, based upon on her comorbidities or her age or whatever reason, we've assigned her to be an extreme COVID risk, which means we really, really don't want her to be working in the COVID wards. It's too much of her health risk for her. Right? She might have diabetes, uh, and and, uh, and um, really is not, and, and other reasons. Right? Um, we can see some of them have less. So this is an, a medium. This is an, uh, a low uh, uh, um, COVID risk. And we even uh, added, for this example at least, uh, people who are inoculated. So people who already had the disease and, um, we're, and we're presuming that people who are inoculated cannot get it a second time or are, are, at, less, are at a much less risk if they get it a second time. Um, we can also use that in our hospitals um, to plan uh, to improve our planning. Now, any using any of these constraints for the record is optional. We can turn any of them off in, in the UI. So it's just the ones any particular hospital wants to use. But if hospitals want to use, uh, want to increase the usage, you know, want to have, use, take the advantage of their inoculated people, we can actually um, take that along into the planning. So let's what happens here. Here we have um, an extreme COVID risk in a COVID war. So we have this nurse with an extreme COVID risk in that COVID war. So we don't want to do that. Uh, that's a hard constraint. Here we have a moderate one. We want to avoid that. That's a soft constraint broken. And here we have an inoculated staff who's not in a COVID war. And we probably want to avoid that because we want to focus those people into the COVID arts. Again, that's a soft constraint. One more COVID constraint I want to show is what I call the migrations. So basically, when you have this nurse over here doing a COVID ward on uh, Wednesday, doing a non-COVID ward on Tuesday, th Thursday, then doing a COVID ward again on Friday, and then doing a non-COVID ward on Saturday, um, that's probably not the ideal situation because it's, it's constantly, it's, he or he is constantly switching between uh, the COVID ward and the non-COVID wards, which basically means there's a risk. Um, an increased risk, a multiple increased risk of bringing COVID from the COVID ward into the non-COVID ward. So we want to minimize those migrations. Right? Uh, we can't rule them out because we probably want to bring some fairness into how many how many times people need to work in the COVID ward anyway. Right? Um, on top of this, there might be other constraints, such as making a, a, and other constraints implemented. For example, making sure that at any time during the day there's at least one inoculated staff if we have enough in staff to cover all times during the day uh, without, of course, uh, uh, you know, giving them too much overtime. And like that. Now, um, let's take a look at the demo of this. So here's our application. Let me start here. So we have a number of skills. You can see some people doctor. Uh, so this is a doctor skill. This is a nurse skill. This is a respiratory specialist skill. Um, we have a number of employees. You can see, for example, Amy Cole here. She has a, she is a nurse. She has a couple of other skills too. And here, Amy Fox. She is a respiratory specialist, right? And you can see if we scroll through this, that each uh, person has a number of uh, skills. Uh, this is um, generated data, uh, but this actually we actually have uh, Opto Planner in production in a couple of countries for hospital scheduling. None yet for COVID risk, uh, but we're working towards that, right? Uh, given that the uh, recency of the crisis. Now, um, to give you an idea, we also have wards here. So here's uh, a number of wards, like the critical care ward, the emergency ward, the cardiology ward, and stuff like that. But here we have the COVID ward 19 ward. So this is the part, this is the normal critical care, this is the COVID 19 critical care ward, oh, and, and even non critical care wards. And you can see we have a biohazard symbol, of course, and you can see that this one is, of course, a COVID ward. Now, um, on top of that, there's contracts. Uh, there's the amount of working days and, and per week and month that we can set for each of the employees, for each of the sets of employees. But what I want to show you before we go into the scheduling part is the availability. 
So here we have Amy Cole, one of our nurses, right? And she wants to work on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of the 25th of May. And you can see that she does not want to work on Saturday the 30th, right? Let's take a look at Amy Fox over here, her second nurse. Uh, she wants to work, she does not work on Wednesday, but she does want to work on Thursday, and she doesn't want to work on Friday. So the Wednesday she cannot work, the Friday she doesn't want to work. Right. You can also see that there's historic assignments already, which we will need to take into account because that means because she worked on the Sunday until 10 p.m., we cannot have her start at 6 a.m. on Monday morning in a new shift because, again, that would be too much time. So all of those other constraints I talked about are also being taken into account. Let's go to the schedule. And these, these are requirements. So, for example, on this Tuesday morning, we need to have a you can see here a doctor, we need to have a nurse over here, and we need another nurse, right? And now we need to give all of our uh, employees, we need to assign, we need to get those assigned. So let, we'll let OptoPlanner do this for us, and we're going to click the schedule button, and it will do that for us. Now, um, it starts scheduling, and while scheduling, I'm just going to go back to my slides and explain a little bit, because you probably, so what's, what's going to happen is, uh, we're going to a number of shifts, we're going to give it a number of employees. This is going to go in the planner, and the planner will then tell us for each of the shifts which employee is doing it. Okay, now this takes 30 seconds or so, and I'll switch back um, in, a, in a few seconds. But why does it take a while to do this solving, right? Well, we have 400 employees, we have more than a thousand shifts in this case, uh, it's over a two week uh, period that we're scheduling, and um. Why? How many possible ways could we schedule a, these shifts and assign each of these shifts to one of those 400 employees? How many different combinations are there? Well, the first one can happen in a thousand ways. So the first shift can be assigned to, oh, sorry, to 400 different ways. The second one also to 400. So that basically means for two shifts, it's two to the power 400. That's the number of combinations. 400 times 400, right? Um, actually, um, and uh, this is the search base. It's um, uh, so it is. It, it ends up as a pretty big number, right? So, um, and if you compare this to the minimum number of atoms in the universe, um, then you'll see the, the search space is much, much bigger than that. I just realized I made a small mistake in these calculations. It's not actually a thousand to the power four hundred. It's four hundred to the power a thousand, which is worse. Um, so it's actually much bigger than this number. Um, in, 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 in any case, um, there's many, many combinations that OptoPlanner is trying to look for, and a lot of them might be feasible, um, but most of them are infeasible. So feasible means no hard constraints broken. Uh, so let's take a look what it came up with. So this is what it came up with. You can see it's still solving. And we can see here at the bottom top, there are no hard constraints broken, no medium constraints broken, which I didn't talk about yet, but we have a couple of medium constraints too. I just show, I just explained a few of the constraints, and this is the soft constraints, which is probably in minutes um, times the number of weights. So this can get pretty big, big this number, um, but this is actually already a, a very good solution. So let's take a look what we see here. So the first thing we see is that uh, in the anesthetics department, um, we can look at, uh, we can see that here we have Beth assigned to the morning shift on Tuesday, and also Hugo and also Elsa. Um, and let's take a look at what happens in the COVID ward. So in the COVID ward, um, what we'll see here is we ha you can see a lot of people who are inoculated here. So you can you actually, if you looked into the, uh, the wards we were looking at a second ago, you can see none of the inoculated people ended up in that ward. Right? Let's go back a second here. So, and, and, and the other way around, you can also see, so, People with who are, have extreme COVID risks, they end up in this ward and or any of the other wards, but not into the COVID ward, right? So let's take a look back at that availability I showed you a second ago. So here's Amy Fox. Um, this is where we can actually allow a nurse to work two shifts on the same day. In some countries, that is a hard constraint, and that's not allowed. And then, of course, you turn on that hard constraint here. You can see it's not turned on, so we do have two shifts on the same day for her. You can see that's on the day she wanted to work, right? And on the day she couldn't work, she doesn't have any shifts. And on the day she didn't want to work, we, didn't have, we don't have any shifts either. Right? Let's take a look at what happened for uh, Amy Cole, right? She wanted to work uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but she couldn't work on Saturday. And of course, we've taken care of that, right? That's a nice example on how that works. 
right? So, and uh, this schedule is basically the same as that available, it just looked at quite differently. Let me stop the solving. Um, we can actually solve it for a while longer and we'll try to find better and better solutions. Uh, but this is a, a feasible solution um, and it's uh, an eroptimal solution. So this is probably, and this is usually what we saw in benchmarks already, um, up to 50% better at that when a versus manual scheduling. Because in manual scheduling, um, they need to get to a hard zero score also to a feasible solution. It's very hard to, to, to take into account those availabilities and when people don't want to work and need and want to work, right? So the yellow, the green ones there. Okay. Continue. So uh, you probably can you show me some code behind this uh, with pleasure, of course. So um, this is the class diagram behind this. So um, we have an employee which has an, uh, a COVID risk type. This is an, 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 a num, like low, moderate, high, or extreme, and stuff like that. We uh, have a skill. Each employee has a set of skills. Um, we have a shift which requires a number of skills, either directly or indirectly through the ward it's assigned to. We can see that the ward either is a COVID ward or it's not. And you can see that the shift is assigned to an employee. So this relationship over here from shift to employee is quite important because that's what OptoPlanner will need to do for you. That's where the AI planning comes into play, right? You need to for each shift, which is the employee. Uh, here you can also see at the bottom the employee availability. So this is the, the red, the green, and the yellow ones uh, we had in the availability screen. So let's take a look at how the employee looks like. Um, so let's look some of these classes. This is just a name. Um, you can add more things on in this if you want to, of course. I've just uh, shown the importance parts. I want to show you uh, some, I just want to highlight a few things. So this has a skill set. Each employee has a skill set. We have a check if all of the required skills are in that skill set. And then we have a shift where we're assigning uh, a shift to an employee. So that's in a particular ward, starts at a particular time, ends at a particular time. The most of the part the important thing here is we've said that this is something that changes during planning and specifically this is the planning variable. This is the amplitude. That's the part that changes during solving, right? That's where OptoPlanner needs to make this, which starts as NULL, nil, and wants to actually uh, uh, choose one of the employees that we have available. And um, now when we do this, OptoPlanner needs to know what is a better solution and that's where score uh, comparison comes into play. So here we have uh, a solution for the problem, but you can see the two hard constraints broken. And then we actually, we will translate these hard, these hard constraints, we will detect these and say, okay, there's two hard constraints broken. And then when OptoPlanner looks at a different solution, this is a different solution, where we have none of the hard constraints are broken, but we do have a number of soft constraints broken, which amounts to minus five soft. And OptoPlanner will automatically choose the bottom solution as the better. That is the one we want to go for, right? And of course, if there's a third solution, like this one over here, where there's less soft constraints broken, and which amount low into a better soft score, minus one only instead of minus five, then of course, OptoPlanner will look, will take this one, right? So. Um, Opto Planner will look through billions and billions of solutions, right? Uh, which is still a fraction of the entire search space, which is uh, billions of, uh, which more than a Google, right? Um, and will evaluate those and will look at the one which fits best. I will return that. So here's how you could write a constraint in there. So what I'm doing here is, is paying, or given a specific roster, I'm going to give take a look at every one of the shifts. So for shifts. I'm going to check if the employee is assigned. If the employee is assigned, I'm going to check if that employee has the skill that we require for that shift, right? So we're just going to check, and if the employee does not have that uh, skill, then we're going to lose a hard score. But that's where we're going to lose minus one hard score. That's something we don't want to happen. This is how we can do it. The problem with this is that it's non-incremental. So let me explain to you what's incremental calculation means. So here's um, a case where we're assigned number of shifts to number of people and we can for each of these skill shifts we can check if it breaks the skill constraint and you can see over here we're assigning these two shifts which needs an engineer to a nurse so they don't have that skill of course um, so we lose two hard points for that now with that code i just shown you every time it it creates a new solution uh up to the entire code is run again so we go through all of the shifts again and we check again which ones are broken and which ones are not like uh, like this one and we calculate minus one now the more interesting thing is if you use incremental calculation which i show you in a minute which is on top of the rule engine but we use plain java to implement it too 
task, what you'll see is only look at the delta. So we see that this particular shift has changed. So we uh, undo that hard loss there, and then we check it on the new location, and we take the old score, which is over here, and we just say, okay, the delta plus one minus zero, and the result is minus hard. And that's a huge scalability gain. So if you look at this into a big O value, it's actually just, it's just, uh, you know, one go faster right it's instead of o n it's o one for the required skill and for and uh, for other constraints it can differ but it's always an, an order of magnitude faster so it's there's it's a, a no brainer to want to, to have this unfortunately to implement that is usually quite hard luckily for optal planner we have something called constraint streams and this is how it works this is the same constraint in that thing but we're basically saying can read this like an, an SQL select from right I'm going to select from shift and when we have a shift for which the employee does not have the skill of that required skill right then I'm going to break a hard constraint right then we're going to penalize that because, uh, we don't want because that shift has an employee who doesn't have the required skills right so th this is the trick basically um, and with this approach you can Joins in there, and if any, and, and and you know, we have very much uh, a lot of constructs in there, but that's the base principle. You get um, the incremental calculation, and which allows you to scale up to hundreds or thousands of, or tens or thousands of shifts, right? Um, I'm going to skip continuous planning to the interest of time. Um, one thing I want to sh also show you is pinning. So, uh, in pinning, the we are going to assign shifts. To employees, but we're going. We can add something called a planning pin, which is always a boolean, and this allows us to say that for certain shifts, we pick the employee in advance. Who is going to do it manually? We allow the user to do that, and we pin it to that particular employee, which means that OptoPanner has to figure out all of the other employees around it, and it will cannot change this. So we're basically, as a user, we're in control. We decide, for example, shift one goes to N, and the other 100, 400 shifts, that's OptoPanner's problem, but don't assign N to another shift at the same time or within eight hours if, if it's a late shift, right? So that's something we take into account. Um, so if you want to get started on this, if you want to try this example which I've just shown you, you can actually just go. To, you can go to this branch and download it. We'll share, it, uh, of course, uh, on, on the stream. And then um, you clone it. You check out the COVID-19 branch. And you maybe clean install it, and then you can just to run the jar there to run it locally. And of course, you can start changing your constraints, adding constraints, playing with it, and, and so forth. Okay, um, one more thing I want to show you is um, we can actually apply AI not just for school time, uh, for um, nurse rostering and uh, doctor rostering. We can also apply it elsewhere because many companies today, many organizations are struggling with the impact of COVID-19 and the rules related to social distancing and so forth. So, then, so let me give you an example. So here's the school timetabling example or Quark's quick start example. And what we need to do there, we need to assign um, lessons into uh, time slots. And um, so this will already happen before COVID was there. And, and we'll see in a minute how COVID uh, uh, affects this. But so they, what they need to do is they need to, to give this to OptoPlanner, solve it, and it needs to make sure that the math lesson, the chemistry lesson have the same students, both grade are not happening at the same time and the chemistry and the French lesson are both being taught by Marie Curie so it's the same picture. so of course that two lessons cannot be at the same time and you can see over here that uh, Marie Curie doesn't have two lessons at the same time first she has one in room B and then one in room A so we take into account all the constraints so uh, let me quickly show you that uh, here we go so I'm going to start Quarkus here on port 9090 and I'm going to show you this is the I'm having here, and you just see I have a room conflict constraint, a teacher conflict constraint, and a couple of soft constraints which I won't go into today. And if we now look into the solution over here, all right, so this is our lessons at the bottom. We're going to assign these to a number of times, number of rooms. We're going to click the solve button. OptoPlanner will do that for us. Um, and you can see it's still the, the, the solution. What happens is that now um, all of them just stop it. That all of the uh, 
uh, lessons are assigned. We ha don't have two lessons in the same room at the same time. We don't have two lessons in the, uh, for the same teacher at the same time. But because we didn't have the student group conflict constraints, we do have some students who have two lessons at the same time. So we're asking some of the students to be in two places at the same time. So we don't want to do that. So let me quickly fix that. Let me add the student group constraint first. Let me go back over here. So this is Quarkus. I just press refresh. It reloads the database and everything. You can see over here, we click the solve button. And we can. And what we'll now see is that, uh, let me stop the solving in a second. And here we go. Is that, again, we have the room conflicts, fine. We have the teacher conflicts, fine. We don't have any teachers having to do two teachers at the same, two teachers at the same time. And when we look at the students, we've just fixed that. And that's how, so we just added that one constraint. I've uncommented adding that constraint. And you can see now we have this into play. So how does this relate to COVID, you might ask? Good question. Well, um, in my location, they're actually starting reopening some of the schools after the lockdown. And um, not for all uh, grades, however. But one of the rules they have is a unidirectional uh, way to go through the hallways of the school. So when you go into the hallways, you can you cannot you have to follow the, the arrow ground, right? So what basically means when we would assign uh, students to be in room B at nine at eight thirty, right, the first hour, and the second hour at nine thirty, they have to switch from room B to room C. They have to actually go into the, uh, in, from room B to room A, they actually have to go into the stream and not follow the arrows, right? Or they would have to follow all the way the arrows and whole, go all the around the, the school building. Uh, that's something we want to avoid. That's a hard constraint that we want to take into account for our things, right? So that's a really good example where we want to uh, apply um, COVID-19 specific constraints into the case, right? So let's take a look at how we can do that. Uh, well, I've actually did implement that here in the COVID counter stream room constraint. Let me quickly show you. We're basically saying when we have a lesson and we have another lesson which is for the same student group and which um, is on the same day where the end time of the first lesson uh, is equal to the start of the same lesson. So we have two lessons. First, we have the two lessons where uh, the student groups goes from the first lesson to the second lesson. And then we see that, um, you know, to a room which is earlier. Here I've just done a simple alphabetical com comparison, but we have them where they go from room C to room B or room A. Then we have a hard train broken. So let's take a look what happened. If we refresh this, right, and we solve this, you will see that if we look at the rooms. We do get a different schedule here. The soft constraints is not that good, so um, I didn't talk about those soft constraints, but we don't get them as optimal because we just added constraint. Uh, we went to eight soft the last time, now we're at six. But let me just show you, if you look at, for example, the ninth grade, um, all right, ninth grade, see they go from room B to, so ninth grade, room B to room, uh, they stay in room B, and then it switches all the time. Um, then if they go over here, uh, at 11.30 they go, so from 10.30 they go to room C, but 11.30, between 11.30 and 12.30 there's a lunch break, so then they go can go to room A. But you will never see them, first three hours, uh, go from uh, room C to room B or from room B to room A, right? They will never see them go into the wrong direction. So um, you will never see them not follow that uh, arrow, there's a lunch break or a day break, right? So, um, short, uh, short summary, uh, AI, pl AI planning brings business agility. Um, so, um, if you want to take a look at this, go, take, go, please go to our website. Um, I need to uh, say that a lot of this work of the OptiWeb employee rostering uh, is credited to Christopher Cianelli and Lucas Petrovicki. So, thank you guys for working on that. And uh, they have a, uh, there's a good blog explaining what I've shown you today in far more detail. So take a look at that on our blog over there. Um, the source code is here available. And if you want to play with the Quarkus example I've just shown you, you can find more about that over here. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, Edson, if you're talking... Uh, yes, I was just checking. We didn't have any questions in the chat, but since, uh, let's see, um, uh, we didn't have much time to show like 
Quarkus Demos or something else? Could, do you have any code open so we could, like, we could have a taste of what is yes. it like in yeah. running with Quarkus? Yes, of course. So, um, so this is actually Quarkus code. Um, and I this, actually wrote this constraint this morning. I just wanted to check okay. if it's possible, but, um, but uh, let me just show you. Let's do, so this is the, uh, this is the entire example, the OptoPlanner quick start, which you can find in the Quarkus quick starts. Uh, and for the record, OptoPlanner doesn't just work with Quarkus, right? We have it other platforms integration too, so you don't have to use Quarkus, but the best experience is with Quarkus, of course, so please do use that. Um, so, here we have lessons which I talked about. So we have a lesson over here, and you can see this has a subject, a teacher. I'm, I've added validation in there, but that's not really important here. Uh, you can see I'm storing that into a database with JPA annotation, 22 ones. And you can see the planning variable here too. So this is a lesson which changes during planning. And for each lesson, we have to choose both the time slots and the room. And then here in the constraint provider, we're adding things like, for example, the room conflict, which says if you have a lesson, if you have two lessons, it's a unique pair, which have the same in the same time slot at the same time, so uh, and in the same room, so in the same room at the same time, then we break a hard constraint. And by adding constraints here, you can uh, make a change the solution we get over here, right? Um, I've got this running in. Uh, uh, with Quarkus Dev, of course. Uh, so here's how I ran it. Where is it? Where is the? Let me just let me scroll up. Um, I have it running on a separate port because of the other thing, so I've just added that here, right? So the Quarkus Maven Quarkus Dev, I have it running on a separate port, so I could run the OptoWeb application at the same time. Um, which basically means if I change anything here, um, so for example, if I disable all of the constraints and I go back to the app, I refresh, I ask it to solve it. What it does, it assigns all the lessons in the same room at the same time because there are no constraints, right? Um, so, yeah. The, I, I really like how you can just... Um, Play with it on the fly, add constraints, remove constraints, and see what the results is very, very quickly. Well, yeah, I think it's awesome to see some Java code and share, like, like most developers that are watching these, like, would even prefer, like, typing let it, that, rather than just clicking on the interface. But it's, I think it's amazing that we can host so kind of problems with a tool such as OptoPlanner and working with a fast, iterative development environment with, like, Quarkus. So... Uh, Geoffrey, I would like to thank you very much for being the first person to present our uh, Devnation Java Tech Talks on Friday. And I know that everybody's struggling with COVID-19. I can see that the work that you're doing is helping people worldwide to try to fight this terrible disease. And just to remind everybody, be safe. And I hope to see everybody on our next Devnation Java Tech Talk. Geoffrey, thank you very much. And see you next time. Thank you, Edson. It was a f fun to be here.